Hey, it's the preacher, and it's your lucky day. It's your lucky day because I'm going to give out my top secret recipe for how to make possum salt. Now, if you're unfamiliar with possum salt, it's a seasoning blend that I make, and I give it out at Christmas. And this year, I'm going to give the gift that keeps on giving. I'm going to give you your own recipe. That way, you can make as much or as little as you want. You can have it any time you want. You don't have to depend on me and the U.S. Postal Service to get you a bottle. So. Uh, a little history on possum salt. I've cooked a possum once. Did a video on it. Cooked a coon once. And I caught a lot of flack over that. You know, people kind of kidding me and whatnot. So I would say, oh, it was good, but it'd been better if we had possum. So then Ozark Spirit makes his own sauce, or own seasoning called Ozark's Shaky Seasoning. And uh, he gave me a bottle. And of course, I've mixed up my own seasoning for years. I just never thought about mixing it up in bulk and giving it away. So it's kind of Ozark's idea, and uh, I just did what I've always done. So I start off with a seasoned salt. And if you want to make um, possum salt, you've got to start off with the best seasoned salt. And that's, uh, that's Lowry's. You can save a couple dollars and get Morton's, but I wouldn't tell anybody because they're going to figure it out on their own when they taste that inferior seasoned salt. Now this is a 2.5 ounce or two two and a half pound. This is a 40 ounce container of Lowry season salt, and that's going to be our base. And so we start off with that, and then now we've got Lowry season salt. Now we're going to make it our own. So you will need a tablespoon and a whisk. And uh, so we'll start off with our smallest measurement. This is onion powder. And I'm going to add about three quarters of a tablespoon of onion powder. To that, I'm going to add, mm, this is garlic powder. Uh, granulated garlic powder is the best. I'm going to add a rounded tablespoon. Then to that, we're going to add some paprika. You've got to be careful with paprika. It adds a lot of nice color. I'm going to add a tablespoon of paprika. And I'm mainly adding it for, for color. Now, up until this point, everybody can do what I've just done. Season, Lowry season salt, granulated garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. Here's where it becomes uniquely... Uh, possum salt. This is cayenne pepper. I've grown this in my own garden and dehydrated it and then ground it up and so uh, it kind of gets clumpy on you so you have to kind of tap it out but to what we have here I'm going to add one tablespoon. To that we're going to add one tablespoon, and this is not sea salt, this is jalapeno peppers that I smoked in a smoker on over white oak uh, logs, and then dehydrated and ground, and this is my homemade chipotle pepper powder. And I'm going to put probably a tablespoon and a half in there, yeah. That will give it a nice complex smoky flavor. Okay. Now last, but certainly not least, this is another pepper powder. This is what I call the sweet mix. This is a mixture of just every sweet pepper I had in my garden. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in my sight. So it's just a mixture of sweet pepper. Some green, some yellow, some red. And I'm going to do a, a, a level tablespoon of that. Alright, you're just going to keep mixing this until it's well blended. And basically, if my... Uh, cayenne pepper was not in such a clumpy form I'd already have it done now because it's pretty well blended so now that we've got it blended we can clear off the counter so let's recap what we put in there store-bought stuff we did a tablespoon of garlic about three quarters of a tablespoon of onion powder a tablespoon of paprika a tablespoon of sweet peppers a tablespoon of cayenne pepper and a tablespoon of smoked jalapeno or chipotle powder. I did a tablespoon and a half. 
And just to be honest with you, it might take a little more. I always kind of go by taste, but those are pretty rough measurements that'll get you there. So let's get all this out of the way. The next thing we need to do is start bottling it up. I got these glass jars, ordered these online, ordered some tops to go on them. Go on just like this one side, you can stick a small spoon in, the other side's got a shaker. Or you can get plastic ones like this one with just a flip top. These have a sealer in them so that when you tighten it down all the way, it actually has a, a compression seal. So we'll fill this one up first. This is the plastic one. I ordered these a couple years ago. I like to use kind of a narrow um, measuring cup. This is, I think, two-thirds of a cup, but one that will fit over the opening of my... Uh, okay, get it to the top. Crank it down. Sure it's on there good? There's your bottle of possum salt ready to go out. Now, the next thing you'll want to do, if you want to get fancy, you'll start making labels. And so we make labels and put over here, and... Uh, when you put a label on it, it just makes it look more professional, unique, like you spent a little more time in it. You didn't just grab up a bunch of stuff out of your cabinets and throw it together. There's your possum salt, ready to go out the door. So guys, I know you can't make it exactly like me because you don't grow the same peppers I do, you don't dry them yourself, you don't have access to that, but you could next year when you plant your garden plant some cayennes, plant some jalapenos, and do a sweet pepper mix, and then smoke some on the smoker, dehydrate them, grind them up in a spice grinder. These make great Christmas gifts. You're giving out something that's unique. They can't go get it in the store. It's something that you made, and uh, if you, you know, do something clever like possum salt, you know, they'll get a kick out of it. Now here, I'll give you a look at it up close. Uh, my daughter and a friend of hers in graphic design school designed the logo. And uh, it says good enough for possum, but you can put it on anything. And then a little bit about it. Guaranteed to have you grinning like a possum. Now once you get your possum salt made, you're going to want to put together a Christmas package for your family. And this is what my family is going to get this year. This is for moms, dads, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, my uncle, this sort of stuff. I've made some of my own hot sauce. This is my pepper sauce. You've seen me make this. If you haven't, you can uh, watch the video. I made a red and a green Tabasco sauce. Uh, this is chow chow that we make and can it. Uh, there's the chipotle pepper sauce. I just buy these little two ounce spice containers. Make a label for them. Blackberry jelly. Grew them right in the backyard. Made jelly. Cayenne pepper to go with that. This is some salsa that we canned out of the garden. And uh, blueberry jam made that as well um this is a garden infused olive oil so i dehydrated some peppers onions and garlic and uh, put it in olive oil to let the flavors meld together and then of course your possum salt now when you give this out at christmas you're not just giving them some, you're not just giving them um, some jelly or, or in the jelly of the month club you're actually giving them something that you've handmade for them and uh, I think it's a very, uh, very special gift. And uh, I, I love giving out the possum salt, but at the same time, people ask me, what's in this? What's in this? You know, where do you buy this? Well, you saw it. That's how I make it. You can make your own. You can make something very similar to it. But the thing about it being homemade, there's no two batches that are the same. So anyways, I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoy the video. And I hope if you don't get possum salt in your stocking, You'll make your own this year. Thanks for watching.